Welcome everybody to the Blood Pressure Challenge. Today's speaker is Diane Parker. She is a registered licensed dietitian. She works for North Kansas City Hospital and she is joining us today to talk about heart healthy eating. This is part of the, the big blood pressure challenge offered by Community Health and Wellness at North Kansas City Hospital. So Diane, I'll let you take it from there. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us, and we have a lot to talk about. Feel free to ask any questions at any time, and um, we can answer those probably at the end, but you're welcome to send us questions at any time. Hey, Dan. Uh, Dan, yeah. may I interrupt just a minute? You're echoing pretty bad. Um, do you want to try your headphones and see if that improves the quality? Yes. Sorry. I can hear that. We had briefly talked about using this if, if necessary, so we'll see if that helps. Okay. Let's try that. All right, can you hear me now? I think that's much better, thank you, yes. Okay. Um, so I was saying, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're gonna have a, a fun talk today about heart healthy eating. And you guys are welcome to send your questions at any time, and I will probably answer those at the end of the presentation. But we do have plenty of time for questions, so feel free. And I will pull up my screen right now. Um, should show the PowerPoint. So can you see the PowerPoint? Yes, we can. It's perfect. Perfect. Well, okay. Can you all see it out there? Um, please send us a chat message if you can't. There's chat is located at the bottom of the screen. And uh, this PowerPoint is going to be safe too, so um, Linda will be able to share that with you guys too later. So what is heart healthy eating? So um, a healthy diet and lifestyle are your best weapons to fight uh, cardiovascular disease and any other kind of disease. We all know that we have to eat better. We all know that we have to add more vegetables, more fruits, but it's easier said than done, right? So remember that you don't have to make a lot of changes at once. You can just start with little baby steps. Everything counts. And I want to give you some tools that you can use to start um, your healthy eating journey. So um, a healthy eating emphasizes on nutritious foods uh, from different food groups. So you want to have a variety of fruits and vegetables during the day, whole grains, um, low-fat dairy. You want to have lean cuts of meat, like poultry and fish. And you want to add nuts and legumes to your diet. Olive oil, canola oil, avocado oil, those are going to be your best oil oils for cooking and just for salads because they are not too high in saturated fats. So what are things to limit? You always want to limit the saturated fat and saturated fats are those that are solid at room temperature. So we're talking about butter, we're talking about lard, we're talking about um, sometimes margarine can have a little bit of saturation too. Trans fats, those are usually on products that are packaged. So donuts, cookies, muffins, sometimes they have those trans fats. And of course, sodium. And we're gonna talk more about sodium in a couple of slides from now. But you always know that you have to limit your sodium. Red meat can be high in fat and we it's something that we have to limit. And of course, sweets and sugary sweetened beverages that can add a lot of calories to our diet without providing any nutrition. So when we talk about meats, and I know many people ask about beef and red meat because that, it is a staple in many households. Um, we're not saying that it's bad for you. We're saying that some cuts of meats can be very high on fat and we always wanna focus on the lean cuts of meats. So if you're looking for red meat, you can see the eye or round roast and steak are gonna be leaner, sirloin tip size steak too. So anything that is roast, the part of the roast um, is gonna be leaner. You can see by the picture things that you wanna 
uh, stay away from and things that you want to look for with, when you're looking for red meat. Um, and I'm sure many of you have heard about the Mediterranean diet. The Mediterranean diet has been gaining a lot of popularity um, because it's been proven to be one of the best healthy diets for heart health and many other medical conditions. So what is the Mediterranean diet? So the Mediterranean diet incorporates foods from traditions of countries born in the Mediterranean Sea. And the main themes are olive oil for fat. That would be the source of fat that they use. They don't eat as often red and processed meats and sweets. They do mostly fish and poultry. They do lots of fruits, veggies, nuts, legumes, and cereals. All right. So there's been many studies done and they find out that the people who eat Mediterranean diet has 25% less chances of having strokes. Also, they have less chances of getting type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and heart conditions. But, so the benefits of the Mediterranean diet are they lower cholesterol, they can improve inflammatory conditions, um, they can promote heart health, and this is what we're looking for here, right? It can help to maintain a healthy weight and reduce the risk of the conditions that I just mentioned. So if we're gonna start from the basics and we're gonna look at the three main micronutrients. So every time that you eat, you wanna have protein, fat, and carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are not bad for you, fat is not bad for you, we just have to choose the healthy carbohydrates um, and the healthy fats. <clears throat> so protein, you know, that would be your meat, your eggs, your fish, your cheese, your peanut butter. Um, and those are essential for tissue repair, building your lean muscle for your immune system. Uh, uh, if you don't get enough protein, your hormones and your enzymes might not work the way that they should. Then for your fats, you have your oils, your butters, your margarine, your salad dressings. Um, there are some foods that have healthy fats like uh, avocados and nuts and seeds. They slow, uh, they're a very slow burning source of energy and you need those to absorb some type of vitamins. So you need fat for your healthy diet. And then we have your carbohydrates. Right, and those are your starches, your grains, your fruits, your milk, your sweets, pasta, potatoes, corn. And they're the primary source of energy for your uh, brain and for your muscles. So you need carbohydrates. I know many times people go on to low carbohydrate diets, but we need those healthy carbohydrates. So what are the main eight things that we focus with the Mediterranean diet? We try to restrict from red meat. We don't eat it as often. We eat seafood at least twice weekly, incorporate whole grains, eat more vegetables, uh, try to go vegetarian once a week, uh, and just try to take a break from any kind of meat. Consume the good fats, enjoy some dairy, and finish your meals with fruit for dessert instead of sugary uh, ice cream or cookies or those type of foods. So let's talk about meat and let's talk about protein. The serving size is usually three ounces, which is like the size of a deck of cards. Um, serving sizes do matter. Even if you're eating something that is healthy, you always want to make sure you're not going overboard with your ser serving sizes. Like I mentioned before, we want to choose rounds and loins. We want to limit the processed meats. Uh, and you know, we're talking about ham, which can be really salty. It's a lean uh, meat, but it can be very salty. Things like bacon, that's mainly fat. It can be very salty, very fatty. Some sausages and hot dogs, uh, again, those are your processed meats, too high in sodium, too high in fat. We talk, uh, be mindful of portion sizes. And we used to think that eggs will uh, increase your cholesterol and to avoid them because they were not good for you. But now we know that the consumption of eggs is fine. You can have one or two eggs per day and you will be completely fine. It's not gonna increase your risk for having high cholesterol. 
So again, we always say that the less feed the animal has, the less fat. So as you see, fish has no feed. That's one of the leanest uh, type of meats that you can eat. Then we have chicken, two legs. We have turkey here that you can have, and that would be your lean. In their leanest fat uh, types of meats, and then of course pork and beef. Those can those are gonna be your highest in fat. Always choose fish and turkey and chicken. So seafood. I know seafood can be a little tricky because it's, it's sometimes it's kind of hard to cook. Um, many times we can overcook the salmon. So, and that can be the reason why sometimes people. We'll say I don't like fish but it's mainly because we don't know how to cook the fish so make sure that you're looking at recipes looking at cooking times to make sure that you know how to cook and enjoy your fish so fatty fish like tuna salmon trout sardines and herring are gonna be very high in omega-3 fatty acids which are really good for your heart and brain if you don't like fish and there's no way that you, you can make yourself eat fish, you can always ask your doctor for an omega-3 supplement. You can use flaxseed, chia seeds, add those to your yogurt, to your meals, and that can help you increase your omega-3s. Um, so whole grains. What is a whole grain and why do we always talk about eating whole grains? When you're looking at labels and you're looking at ingredients, you will see that um, you need to look for whole wheat um, as the first ingredient. Whole wheat and whole grain, multigrain, I know it can be very confusing. So just know that you want to look for the label for something that says whole grain or whole wheat. Um, if a product says multigrain, it just means that it has different kinds of uh, grains in there. So always look for the whole wheat. So whole wheat products are gonna have more fiber and that's what we're looking for. The white bread is stripped from the fiber. When they're making white bread, they're also taking many my, uh, vitamins and minerals out of that when they're stripping the, the wheat. That is why when you're having a whole grain, uh, you're getting more vitamins, you're getting more minerals and you're getting more fiber. Uh, consider substituting pasta and rice for couscous, quinoa, bulgur, farro, and barley. And um, I know those can be kind of tricky to cook, but it just uh, takes some reading and reading the instructions on those products and make sure you're trying different grains. Fiber. So why do we talk so much about fiber? What are the benefits of fiber? So fiber is uh, it's just so good for your digestive health. It feeds your bacteria, um, it cleans your intestines, so it, it helps clean and lower your cholesterol. It helps with satiety, it helps you full longer. Um, it helps lower your LDL, your bad cholesterol, it helps with sugar control, glucose control. So the benefits of fiber are very great. Um, so if you're a female, you want to have around 25 grams of fiber per day. If you're a male, you want to have around 30 to 35 grams of fiber per day. So when you're reading labels, make sure you're looking at the fiber content in the uh, label and choosing products that are at three or four grams or higher on fiber. That way you can get your fiber in a day. When you increase the fiber in your diet, you want to increase the fluids, mainly water because if you don't have enough water in your body the fiber is not gonna go anywhere fiber needs water to sweep and clean and get out of your body so vegetables we always talk about eating a lot of vegetables um, easier said than done I know many times we buy a lot of vegetables with a good intention to eat them but, and then they stay there and we don't really cook them so when you're looking at Making a meal or doing meal prepping, making a grocery list, make sure that you're using the plate method in which you add half of your plate is vegetables, one fourth is your carbohydrates, and the other fourth is your protein. Uh, focus on non starchy vegetables. So let's focus on peas, corn, and potatoes because those are going to be your very starchy veggies. Um, 
and include more dark green and orange uh, leafy greens daily. You can choose frozen, fresh, can. It doesn't matter as long as you do low sodium, of course. Uh, but frozen vegetables are as as good as the fresh, and fill half of your plate like that. So we always say eat the rainbow, right? Because every single different color of vegetables, they're gonna have different nutrients. So if we're looking at the orange color vegetables like carrots and butternut squash, pumpkin, they're gonna have a lot of vitamin A, vitamin C. So that's why we wanna incorporate those type of colors in your diet and make sure that you're switching around the type of vegetables that you eat. Don't always eat lettuce. Um, Lettuce are fine, but they don't have as many nutrients as spinach or kale or broccoli. So um, when we're looking at a plate again, make sure that this is what your meals are looking like. Portion size and nutrient wise, you're having half of the plate, your vegetables, one fourth your carbohydrates and the other fourth your protein. So you will see that in the first, First plate, um, peas are going to be your carbohydrate. I know many times people use those as a vegetable, but they're really starchy. So that's going to be your carbohydrates. They're not bad for you, so it's okay to still enjoy them. But if you're going to have potatoes, corn, and peas, uh, we need to find one carbohydrate only and take the rest away and maybe eat them in another meal. So let's keep talking about how to incorporate incorporate more vegetables. I'm sure you guys have seen these in the stores, the veggie spirals. Um, you can make those at home. Those are gonna be made with zucchini, sometimes with butter and squash, sometimes with carrots. Uh, they're great additions to make pasta. You can make pasta with those. Uh, cherry tomatoes, peppers, garlic, onions. Make sure that you're adding tons of vegetables to every single meal that you're making. Try using lettuce wraps uh, instead of tortillas, uh, stuffed peppers, veggie noodles, veggie burgers, cauliflower pizza crust is something, cauliflower is on everything now. It's a great vegetable that you can use. Um, you can get cauliflower rice. So make sure that you're using all kinds of vegetables every time that you make a meal. So go vegetarian one night a week. Um, so try to use beans, lentils, soy. You can try tofu, aremame, which is soybeans. Um, you can try nuts, seeds, nut butter, chia seeds. You can use veggies, broccoli, spinach, Brussels sprouts. You can swap your rice for quinoa. So if you see those peppers in there, they look pretty good. They got beans, they got corn, they got quinoa, they got cheese, and that would be a very healthy, easy to make meal. So increasing your fruits and your vegetable intake to 1.3 pounds per day. So that would be the equivalent to having three cups of fruits and three to four cups of vegetables per day. So just make a goal. If you feel like you're not getting enough fruits or enough vegetables, and you feel like you're only getting your vegetables for dinner, maybe your goal should be to add a vegetable for lunch. And then little by little, you can increase your vegetable intake. So let's talk about fats, right? So you wanna choose the ones that are liquid at room temperature, uh, like olive oil. Uh, we have other options too, avocado oil, olives, nuts, and seeds, fatty fish. So when you're cooking, sometimes olive oil burns because you have a very low smoke point. So you can use avocado oil, canola oil, if you're uh, planning to use it for cooking and use the olive oil for salads or for dressings. Um, but you wanna include this in a daily meals. You wanna have your healthy sources of fats with, uh, every day. Like I mentioned before, because it will help absorb those uh, fat vitamin solubles and you make you feel full longer, helps with satiety. So if you're eating out, how do you know how to choose healthy foods and how do you know how to stay away from foods that are not so healthy? So if you're looking at the high fat cooking methods, you're gonna look at the words that are like fried, crispy, scalloped, gratin, 
pan fries, saute, butter, cream stuffed. So those are kind of words that are kind of tell you that those are cooked in a way that are high in fat. But if you look for things that are baked, broiled, boiled, steamed, grilled, poached, roasted, those are usually the cooking methods that are gonna be lower in fat. So always look for that when you eat out and be mindful of portion sizes. So dairy is fine to enjoy, it's good for you. Make sure that you're choosing the low fat options, skim or 1%. Consider using uh, Greek, plain Greek yogurt, um, and you can put that some fruit on that, you can put flaxseed, because dairy is gonna be a great source of calcium. Uh, and so you can enjoy that, you can enjoy your cheese, uh, but try to stay away from uh, butter and sour cream and things that are not so healthy. So you can finish with fruit for dessert. Um, so fruit is very nutrient dense, it's full of fiber, and again, I always talk about fiber, making sure that you're getting enough fiber. So if you're getting your fruit for dessert, that's going to be a great way to get your vitamins, get fiber. You can try grilling fruit for a new twist. Um, and just leave me simple carbohydrates as cake, cookies, pies, candies, and ice cream. There is room for this type of food, but not every day. You can save those for special celebrations. So let's let's talk about salt, right? So many times people ask, why is salt so bad for you? What's the issue with salt? Um, so salt is not bad for you. So your body actually needs salt. Um, your body needs salt and potassium. Uh, the salt is gonna help pump fluid into and out of your cells. So the right level of salt allows your muscles to contract and your nerves to fire. So they also regulate fluid intake and fluid levels in your body. And it can help prevent dehydration. The thing with salt is that we gotta make sure that you're, we're not having too much. So if you're having excess salt, that can cause some uh, excess of fluid retention. And if you have too much fluid build up in your bloodstream, it can cause your kidneys to not be able to filter all the way that fluid. So the fluid is kind of built and cause your blood vessels to uh, have too much straining in the walls. So over time, this can cause high blood pressure and it can lead to kidney disease, heart conditions, and stroke. So that is why we actually said, Try not to too much sodium. So what is too much, too much sodium? How much sodium should I have? So limit your sodium to 2,000 milligrams or less per day. Um, and we know that one teaspoon of salt is 2,300 milligrams. So that adds up pretty quick. Um, so one of the main things that you can do is make sure you're not adding salt to your food. Try to stay away from cured, smoked, and processed meats. Frozen dinners, pizza, canned soups um, that are full sodium, those are some things to stay away from. Uh, eating out can be very tricky because when you eat out, that's going to have, um, most meals going to have the whole sodium that you need for one day. So being mindful of that, asking when you eat out, can, please, can you please don't add any salt to my meal. You can swap this, the shaker with some salt alternatives, so like Mrs. Dash, fresh, fresh herbs. And it is important to remember that sea salt contains the same amount of salt than table salt. So it's not better, it's not worse, it's just salt. So um, when you're reading labels, make sure that you're looking at the portion size, right? Because sometimes the portion size is seven chips, or the whole bag. So what is the portion size and how much sodium is in there? Choose foods that have less than 140 milligrams of sodium per serving. And when you're reading labels, many products are gonna tell you that they are salt or sodium free. Doesn't mean that they don't have any sodium. They, that means that they have less than five milligrams of sodium per serving. Uh, a product that is very low sodium it's going to have around 35 milligrams of sodium or less per serving. Something that is very low sodium, um, something that is low sodium is going to have 140 milligrams or less per serving. Reduced sodium, it just means that it has less than 25%. 
sodium that the regular product in light salted or light sodium it has less than 50 percent sodium than the regular product so be mindful that those words can be confusing just because sometimes it says reduced sodium doesn't mean that it's sodium free it means that it still kind of have some salt so always be reading the labels and try to find products that are low sodium so we have here some examples of mrs dash so herbs are great for adding flavor to your food without adding the salt and many herbs have anti-inflammatory properties meaning that they can be healthy uh, healthier for you they can have with inflammation and even testier so don't feel afraid to use garlic and onions cilantro parsley to your meals you'll be surprised how the flavor changes um, and many times when you're adding uh, garlic or parsley or cilantro, you are adding more vitamin C to your meals. So let's talk about some swaps. Um, instead of using mayo on a sandwich, you can use hummus. Um, instead of butter on a toast, you can use olive oil and garlic, or you can use avocado. It spreads really well. Uh, for beef pasta sauce, you can add more veggies. To that, you can add carrots, you can add tomatoes, you can add all kinds of things that you have uh, celery to your pasta sauce. Instead of having a chocolate cake, you can have a baked pear, pear or apples. Um, if you're having a bagel with cream cheese or with jam, you can always have maybe oatmeal with berries or a Greek yogurt with granola. So think about making some different substitutions to your diet. So other things to consider, we know that uh, liquid calories are tricky, right? Because many times you can have all the sugar that you need in one day or more in one sugary drink. So we know we have to be mindful of that. Um, so goals are six, less than six teaspoons of sugar per day for women in nine for men. So if you look at a soft drink, Soft drinks can have around 16 teaspoons of sugar per day. Juice, even though juice is not bad for you, but it has a lot of sugar and that can spike your blood glucose. So be mindful of sports drinks, energy drinks, um, and always try to choose water. 64 ounces or more water per day, it should be your goal. Um, that's about eight cups of water. Always get your water and try to stay away from the sugary drinks. Um, alcohol, so alcohol in moderation during the, uh, the Mediterranean diet, they do drink red wine, um, but it, of course everything is with moderation. If you don't drink alcohol, you don't have to start. Yeah. So one glass for women and two glasses for men, that is the recommendation. But what is a glass or what is considered one serving? So as you see, um, 1.5 ounces, so 80 proof liquor or distilled spirits. Five ounces of wine is one serving. 12 ounces of beer is one serving. So those are the recommendations. No more than one per day for women, no more than two for men. And of course, this is something that you don't wanna be doing every day. So here are some books that will help with uh, making easy recipes that you can cook in less than 20 minutes that are low sodium. Uh, those books, some of those books are from the uh, American Heart Association and they're pretty affordable. So if you go to their website, the American Heart Association, you can find and buy those books in there. Uh, just to give you more ideas of what to do with your meals and how to make easy, healthy, fast meals. So what is a day of eating in the Mediterranean diet style? So if you have oatmeal in the morning, you can add nuts, you can add bananas, you can add any kind of nut butter to add more protein to your meal. Some people like to add protein powder to get more protein. Um, many times breakfast can be very high carb and low protein. So always think about adding more protein to your breakfast. For lunch or for dinner, you can have a pasta salad. Make sure you're throwing a lot of veggies, olives, cherry tomatoes, legumes. 
uh, garbanzo beans, any kind of beans. Um, this is a perfect salad because it has, you can add everything in one meal. You can add meat, and you can have some chicken with this and then have some protein. Uh, you can make your own dressing or you can use uh, just olive oil. So that would be a perfect meal here. Um, then for dinner, you can have salmon, you can have a little bit of rice and your vegetables. Always be mindful of serving sizes and look at um, the plate. Make sure you have your protein, your carbohydrate and your vegetables. Here's some more ideas, things to snack on, cheese and tomatoes. Um, and then that meal over here, that would be chicken, grilled chicken, corn and your salad. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, you don't have to be perfect. Your diet doesn't have to be perfect. It's not about restriction. It's not about, oh, I cannot have this. Um, it's just about making little changes every day. So instead of using white bread, you can uh, decide to move to whole grain bread. Uh, have a piece of fruit instead of candy bar. Try at least seven servings of fruits or vegetables every day. You don't have to go with seven right away, but you just uh, add one at a time. Um, and make sure you're doing changes that are slowly that you can sustain in the long run, but always making sure that you're having those healthy meals that they don't come in a pre-package, but they're natural and healthy. You can always switch from 2% milk to, or whole milk to 1% milk or skim milk. Instead of meat, you can have fish for dinner. You can brush it with olive oil, broil it, grill it. Now that is hopefully when the weather gets nice, you can grill. Switch from butter to cholesterol lowering soft spread or use olive or canola oil, oil for cooking. Again, you can use herbs and spices instead of salt to add more flavor um, and just modify your recipes so they have less fat, less calories, but they still taste good. And that is the presentation. Any questions? Thank you, Dan. That was a wonderful presentation. So much good information. I hope everybody greatly enjoyed that. If you do have some questions, you guys can access the chat box at the bottom of your screen. Um, you'll see the chat box come up there. So just kind of want to see if anybody's got any questions. I particularly like the part about salt. Um, I love salt, so I thought those were some really good tips and different ways to season your your meats and stuff with different alternative maybe um, spices. So that's really good. I like that. Oh, good. Yeah. So we're just so used to eating so much salt. <laughs> yes, we are. Yeah. And it's hard to kind of cut that down, but eating a quiet taste. So the less you eat, the less you're going to crave. So it is, it can be challenging, but it can be doable. Deanne, I just wanted to mention, um, so when you do have canned vegetables, such as green beans, that is something you could rinse off and maybe take some of that salt off the vegetable? Yeah, so you can do that and always make sure you're getting the low sodium kind. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Okay. You'll be decreasing some of that sodium. That's a good tip. Mm -hmm. Yay. <laughs> Okay, well, um, at this point, we'll go ahead and conclude the presentation. Thank you again, Dan. If anybody does have any questions, they're sure welcome to give me a call at 816-691-1688, or you can email me, and that would be Linda, L-I-N-D-A dot Craven, C-R-A-V-E-N, at nkch.org. Okay. All right. Thank you, ladies. Thank you again, Dan. We'll talk Thank to you. you. Bye. Okay. Bye.